What you see here on display is my YouTube channel. And the reason why I'm calling myself math photographer is, yes, I'm a professional photographer. I do shootings. I sell large prints to clients. But I'm also a mathematician by profession. And I have a PhD in probability. I did mathematics many years in my career. And uh, that's the reason why I'm always interested in statistics. And this week, a colleague of mine from London sent me a link to a website where coronavirus or COVID-19 as we should call it more precisely, is tracked in terms of contagion across the globe. And there are all kinds of useful statistics on that page. So I decided to do something completely different given the current situation we have with that global threat coming from that virus and share it on my channel. It's not related to photography. It's not related to mathematics besides that it is all about statistics. But I think it will be useful for people also to follow up what's really going on with that virus globally and what cities or spots in the world you might want to better avoid in order to stay safe and keep your family safe. So this is the dashboard I'm talking about on that website I was mentioning in the intro to my video. And the first thing I always do, and actually you should do before accepting statistical numbers is we need to understand the source of those numbers. Because there's a lot of abuse and manipulation going on on the planet in the world today with statistical evidence, which is not really statistical evidence. And people are manipulated. People are by intention drawn to conclusions by numbers because they believe these are serious numbers. So we need to understand the source of those numbers before we want to decide to trust them. And the source of those numbers is here. It's coming from the Johns Hopkins University. It's from the Center for Systems Science and Engineering. And they developed this dashboard. So if you click this, you come to the dashboard and explain also why they did it. And they say here, in response to this ongoing public health emergency, we developed an interactive web-based dashboard hosted by the Center for Systems Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University to visualize and track reported cases, and that's important here, in real time. So this is permanently updated. Every new case which is known is actually worked into the statistics here. So we get a permanently updated dashboard. And since this is from a university which has a very high reputation, since this has a scientific background and this can be tested and verified by other researchers in the world, I think this is a set of numbers we can trust going forward. So let's go back to the dashboard now. We verified the source of the numbers, we can trust the statistics, and now we can deal with the numbers. And first of all, looking at the dashboard, it's very well done. You have different sections here. So in the middle, you have a world map. You can also customize the world map by clicking into that icon here and then choose a topographic representation or different styles here. But that's not so important for me. I'm just looking at the numbers and the facts and the visualization here is just good enough for me. Then there is a section on the left hand side where you can scroll and deep dive into different locations and you always get the number of confirmed cases here. And then there is a right hand side section where you see the total number of deaths and the total number of recovered people who actually recovered from COVID-19 and uh, are back into normal state of health. So let's look at the numbers now. First of all, the total number of confirmed cases is 82,446. And let's not forget, this is the official number. So these are confirmed cases. The dark figure probably is much larger. There will be lots of people who are infected and don't even know by now. There will be lots of people who are infected and have not reported it to the authorities, have not been discovered. So probably the real problem is much larger than what we see here. And uh, in a deep dive into different locations, you see, of course, and that's well known from the media, mainland China, if I click on that, is the main hub, also the origin of the disease. And you see it here, if we zoom in a little bit, you see here the magnitude of the problem. And clearly this is something which has lots of consequences. First of all, looking on the death cases here, 2,744, uh, this is the second danger with statistics. If you look at numbers, they appear to you as numbers, but every individual case underlying those numbers is a tragedy. There are family, there are relatives, there are friends who will miss that person forever. So let's not forget that. And if you look at numbers, let's not completely ignore 
the underlying problems, the underlying grievance, the underlying families, relatives and friends who missed these people forever and for the rest of their life. The total number of recovered cases is also very interesting here. And if you compare this with the total number of death cases, this is a very high number. And um, that's the good thing besides the bad news that COVID-19 is spreading more aggressively and contagion is much higher than with formerly known SARS virus. It also has a much higher chance for people to recover. And that is what you find here in that number. And that's, I think, the good thing about that virus. The chances are much better to get up into normal state of health. Um, if we think about economic implications, and I will only briefly speak about that, the economic implications of that virus are huge. And you already see it in the numbers. Growth in China has come down significantly. Macroeconomists warn for a global slowdown of the economy because, of course, in Asia Pacific, in particular in China, but also in South Korea, where you see here almost 1,600 confirmed cases, these are important contributors to the world economy. And unfortunately, Wuhan is a central infrastructural hub for China. So a lot of trade is going in and out of Wuhan. And since this is locked down, this has severe consequences. And you also see it in the supply chain to other parts of the world from China that, you know, supply is coming significantly down compared to demand, which is still high, in particular in technology and in gadgets, of course. If you look into other locations, what is also a very, let's say, scary data point is Italy here. So Italy came into the news and the headlines a few days ago, and uh, you see here 453 confirmed cases. This is really, um, I think, a threat for Europe because it's not possible in an open economy like Eurozone to actually shut down the borders to have more strict controls. It's not possible. People will travel and if they are in the incubation time, which is two weeks, they might not even know that they are infected. And so the virus will become contagious across Europe. And that's something to bear in mind. Japan is the next highest one. Then we have Iran here, Singapore, Hong Kong. You see a lot of Asia Pacific. You see 60 cases in the United States. And in the United States, actually, you have more details. So if we go into a city here on that on that uh, button here, we actually can also see where the cases are. So 42 confirmed cases in unassigned locations, but then there are two in particular in Chicago, two in San Benito, we can scroll down here, one in Boston and so on, one in LA. And again, we are talking about confirmed cases here, not about dark figures. So let's go back here. If you scroll down further in Europe, Germany has 27 cases. I think the headlines brought confirmed cases in Munich, but also in other locations. We have Australia here, 23 cases. There was also an interesting article in the news about Australia flying infected people to Christmas islands and isolating them. I could already see myself. That's why I canceled the trip to Sydney, sitting on Christmas island and drinking coconut milk for the rest of my life, uh, which is not what I wanted. But in general, I think travel behavior is very important that people become conscious about this. This is a good time to, if you are in an affected region to work from home, this is a good time to be conscious about travel. And this is a good time of making the sanitizer for disinfection of your hands your best friend. And maybe also having, you know, a face mask somewhere in your luggage. If you get into an affected area, make sure you protect yourself, you stay safe and you keep your families and friends safe. Going down here in that list, we find Finland, Sweden, and so on. We find Austria, two cases. Then here we see, you know, Switzerland. Okay, that's my home. So one confirmed case. But since there is a lot of travel, I think also on the event side, people should stop having events. You know, there should be no fashion week. I don't know by now if they already canceled it or not. And I know it's also a problem for lots of us photographers out there, but it's just not a good time for events. Let's try to get this under control and then let's start to travel again. So this is the dashboard here. If you click again on a location, you come back to the worldwide view. So very nicely done. And I think I already covered that. Let's now come to this section here. And here's an interesting chart where you can switch on and off different curves. And the first one here is mainland China. If I switch this on, I see the exponential contagion in mainland China over the first weeks which are covered here. 
And then in February, there was another spike. So if you point on the plot here, you actually get the statistics. So you see this is the 7th of February. This is the 8th. And you see always the statistic where it is. And then here is a significant spike up between the 12th and the 13th of February. But then it starts to saturate. And that's what you can also find in the news and in the media, that the Chinese authorities did a lot to get this under control, to get this problem ring fenced. They shut down and locked up certain regions and they have strict controls. So here you see a saturation. If that is the full picture and if it's not spiking up again, then China might get this under control in the next weeks, which would be very good. Um, we can also go to other locations and other locations is a different picture. And as I said before, Italy just came up a few days ago in the news and in the headlines, now already at 450 plus cases. And you see in other locations, this is still spreading out exponentially. So here we did not reach that saturation point. And I think there is more that needs to be done to ring fence that problem, get it contained and under control. And then you also have the curve for the total recovered cases here, which is also going up exponentially, which is natural because as I mentioned before, that virus gives you a higher chance of recovery. So if the number of infected cases goes up exponentially, the total number of recovered cases should also go up exponentially. So that's probably just in the shadow of what we saw before in terms of infections. All right, so you can also see these curves in perspective and related to each other. Let's switch off the recovery part. Let's go to other locations and let's compare other locations. And now the scale here will change on the y-axis with mainland China. And clearly you see here, there is a big difference between the rest of the world and mainland China, but mainland China also was the original country where the disease started to spread over to other regions. And that's also, I think, a natural illustration of the problem we see here. I stopped the video here because this is not my main area of expertise. I'm not a medical doctor and I'm just a normal human being following in the media the threat called COVID-19. But I thought it's useful to share for people visiting my channel. And uh, I think behind these numbers, there are individual people and we never should forget that. If you like that video, I'm always happy if you give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. This video, like every content on my channel for the time being, is not monetized. So I'm not hunting for subscribers with that video. I'm not hunting for views or clicks. I just wanted to share some information in a globally connected world where we should actually all make sure that everybody else has the best data points on a certain problem or a certain crisis like we have it here in this global pandemic. So at the end of the video, let's send our prayers, best wishes and most positive thoughts to affected regions, people, families out there. Let's make sure we stay safe ourselves. You need to make sure you stay safe. Be conscious when it comes to travel. Keep your family safe and peace out.